Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the uh, Friday, the 5th of August 2016. Be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of markets, post Mr. Carney's little QE blitz. Okay, let's try and understand exactly uh, how this market is interpreting it again. Uh, another round of QE certainly is lifting equity markets, although uh, the BOJ QE certainly is factored in here now. And uh, I would, uh, one would argue as well that the BOE QE certainly is, uh, is is certainly being baked into the cake and certainly has lost its potency as well. OK, certainly is losing its potency. Is QE actually going to be beneficial now? Interesting. OK, we'll see. Again, markets have pushed higher to a large extent, but again, a lot of that. Uh, news certainly is baked into the cake. Okay, now let's try and uh, understand exactly what's happening here. First of all, Asian markets overnight. Nikkei was certainly negative. Uh, the Shanghai negative, so certainly two negative factors this morning. Okay, the Hang Seng was really the only out one that was shining uh, out from the rest. But uh, Asian markets certainly not uh, embracing Mr. Carney's QE. Okay, again, one person's QE is another person's loss because obviously they're debulking their currency at the expense of another. So it's given the fact that obviously global trade is a zero sum game. And everybody is, is trying to uh, devalue the currency to a large extent. Okay, right. Uh, in terms of uh, Mr. Carney's comments, he did mention that obviously there was a, the reason why he did QE was because of the potential future growth concerns. And again, that's not exactly good news for the uh, for the economy, folks. So how much can we rely on QE? This Japan certainly has tried it and it's failed for the last few years. Okay, so again, even America, they certainly try it, and still they can't wean themselves off it. So. To, still too afraid to actually raise rates. Okay, so again, it certainly is a, a questionable as to whether QE is actually productive uh, and efficient uh, tool or monetary policy tool. Again, uh, we shall see. Okay, in terms of the markets, uh, economic data uh, this morning, we certainly have had two pieces of information that are negative. German factory orders certainly coming in weaker. Okay, much weaker than expected. Uh, the French exports coming in weaker. Uh, the imports coming in uh, weaker as well. Trade balance data out of France, certainly weaker. Industrial uh, output as well from uh, some Spain certainly came in on the weaker side. Okay. In terms of economic data yesterday from the US, jobless claims certainly weaker. Okay. Factory orders came in uh, potentially weaker as well. So certainly economic data globally is weaker and the market really is only focused on this concept of QE. And how long can we focus on QE for? That's the question. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the actual technical factor now. Technical arguments, given the fact that we do have US uh, jobs data later on, which again will be quite instrumental. Okay. So let's bring up the daily chart of the German DAX. Again, where it's an inside bar consolidation. So I'm looking for this potential bear flag to, uh, to form and, and play out. 60 minute chart at the moment. We're back into that key resistance zone in the German DAX now. Okay. So this zone itself is quite important. On the 10 minute chart, let's just look at the smaller time frame. Again, we're going back and retesting that resistance zone above. You do have one fill gap below, so again, looking to potentially close that gap as well. So, bear that in mind. Just bring up this uh, level here so you have two gaps to potentially close. Okay, so again, the market remains vulnerable to gap fill below. Okay, so uh, is Mr. Carney's uh, uh, QE bullish? Yes, it is, but a lot of that has been factored in, as I'll show you on the FTSE chart. Okay, so German DAX certainly is facing turbulence here and facing resistance. The French CAC now, folks. Okay, so going over to the French CAC, looking at the daily chart, the French CAC again, it's just inside bar consolidation within this red candle that was issued or triggered on the 2nd of August, and really it's bearish consolidation. 60 minute chart at the moment, yes, we've oh, ticked higher. Okay, certainly tick time. But having said that, you bear in mind the weaker for trade balance data as well. That certainly is going to weigh on the uh, index. Okay, so again, you have gap fill resistance at 4,000. So again, if we do come to that region, 4,400, sorry, that's a level that will potentially reshort the uh, the actual for I uh, short the French CAC. Currently short the Euro stocks, and I'll certainly, yeah, I'm more than happy to short the, uh, the French CAC in that zone. 10 minute chart at the moment really we have pushed higher having said that just bear in mind that there is an inverted head and shoulders formation okay so again uh, bear that in mind okay and obviously you have gap fill above so gap fill resistance is at 4.4% that will be the key resistance zone to potentially short the French CAC from my perspective the IHS target on the French CAC you're looking at 4.290 to get a neckline at uh, 4350 so you're looking at a 60 point move looking at 4410 makes sense okay so again 4350 to 4410 again would, would potentially be solid resistance for the uh, the french cac okay so again watch out for that zone okay 4410 solid solid resistance 
Okay. In terms of the FTSE 100 now, this is the key uh, index. So let's just go to the weekly chart. You can see weekly chart. Certainly, uh, uh, let's just bring this up for you. Sorry, weekly. Okay, here we go. So weekly chart, a lot of turbulence here. Seems that uh, six, is it 6,800? Yep, 6,800. A lot of turbulence is seen. 6,800. So watch out, 6,800. That will be your key resistance zone. Okay, so again, you have previous resistance. So previous support equals resistance. So again, watch out for 6,800. We're currently at 6,780. Okay, 6,780 corresponds with the daily daily chart you had resistance at uh, 6780 zone that's exactly where we are at the moment okay if we do push higher then the next level is at 6800 6805 we push higher again you're looking at 6880 8090 etc okay so certainly looking at resistance zones above 60 minute chart you're into horizontal resistance the bull flag certainly has played out and completed itself today having said that we have had a weaker earnings from rbs so bear that in mind royal bank of scotland weaker earnings from rbs so uh, we've also had weaker earnings from alliance alliance okay uh, Japan leading index certainly weaker as well overnight and obviously we already know Japan and Shanghai certainly weaker as well therefore indicating risk off okay so certainly looking for this resistance level to hold here folks if I was actually break it down into the individual sectors and in FTSE I think that will be quite important also the FTSE 250 you can see back into resistance as well okay so just bear that in mind so looking at weakness let's look at the banking sector at the moment certainly is uh, coming off the potential lows so again certainly something to uh, some food for thought here okay Certainly food for thought. Now, one of the uh, important things for me really was the uh, the reason why I am actually have a short bias is the S&P 500. If you bring up the S&P 500 on the daily chart, you clearly see that we have inside bar consolidation, but certainly bearish price action, 60 minute chart. We hit a pivot uh, of uh, Fib 61. Currently, we're trading around the 2170. 2170 is a Fib 75%. So just bear that in mind, okay? Bear that in mind. And also you do have gap fill resistance as well. So. If I just uh, show you here, 2170 and 2172 horizontal resistance, okay? I did expect this resistance zone to hold yesterday. It, will, it did hold more for the majority of the day, okay? And as you can see now, we certainly have pushed above it, okay? One of the reasons why I shorted the... Uh, the Nasdaq yesterday was mainly because of 2167 holding on the S&P. Uh, but having said that, you are into gap fill resistance now. So bear that in mind. So you're into gap fill resistance here. Okay, so 2171 gap fill resistance currently trading around the 2170 zone and horizontal resistance is seen as well. So certainly looking for weakness at this Fib 75% retracement. Okay, bear that in mind. 2170 is Fib 75%. You've certainly put in a triple top, quadruple top. This was a potentially a lower high. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm bearish on European equities right now. Okay, my stop loss on the NASDAQ is uh, currently, I'm sure the NASDAQ stop loss on the NASDAQ, recollect 4774. And that's where my analysis will be negated. Okay, so again, given the fact that the S&P is about to make a lower high, therefore I will maintain my bearish bias on European equities. And given the fact that the FTSE itself has had quite a stellar rally, and certainly has baked in the uh, the actual QE move. I mean, we've had a low, pivot lower 6620, currently trading 6780. So we're up 160 points. And that certainly, from my perspective, certainly has factored in the potential QE move. If I'm wrong, obviously this market will continue to move north. Okay, so again, keep an eye on that. Right, uh, the euro stocks. Let's just bring up the euro stocks as well. Before I do, let's quickly look at the mining sector. FTSE weekly mining. Let's look at the daily. Okay, so daily, obviously, you got horizontal resistance there on the mining sector. You have oil and gas. Okay, look at oil and gas daily chart at the moment. Yeah, we certainly have bounced from that pivot low. Okay, so again, certainly take that with a pinch of salt in terms of the next move. From my perspective, like I said, I'm focusing on the uh, European. Uh, so say US markets for now and then allowing them to dictate based on intermarket analysis. Now, again, if QE uh, wants to move this to index higher, then that's by all means it can certainly do so. Hence, the reason why I'm only short is just shorting the NASDAQ and the um, Euro stocks and not the FTSE because it certainly will have a mind of its own. Okay, Euro, uh, Euro stocks. Okay, so again, into previous support equals resistance on the Euro stocks, looking for weakness here. Okay, my ideal aim on the Euro stocks at the moment is a HS formation, which obviously has been negated now. But looking for a potential gap fill below at 2910. That was my target. Okay, for now, you are looking at potential gap fill at uh, 2930. So let's just look for 2930 for now. Again, if that cracks, then you're looking at support at 2920. And ultimately, you want to be uh, into that zone at 2910 for gap fill. Okay, I think that's a wrap for the European morning market close. Again, keep an eye on the FTSE with resistance at 6780, 6800, and then 6820, 6840. And but with regards to uh, German DAX, French CAC, and the Euro stocks, certainly resistance is seen at this current juncture. 
with US markets potentially making a lower high, looking for weakness. Okay, folks. On that note, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of that 25% bonus. Goodbye.